last 10 years, I've had the pleasure of hosting adult education, HVAC trade-specific classes across the industry. Without fail, some aspect of the next five rules I'm about to explain are impacted. Welcome back, I'm Chris with HVAC Pro Blog. Today we're gonna to talk about the five rules of continuing education for students coming to my classes. The first rule is the rule of inverse direction. This happens at almost every training, no matter which location. Just so you know, my recommendation and my rule is, particularly since I was in the Marine Corps, if you're not 15 minutes early, you're late. So here's how the rule of inverse direction works. The students that live the furthest away from the class are always there first. This would mean the students that live the closest show up late. I really believe this is because they plan for traffic and all of the unforeseen circumstances like bad weather or other anomalies I haven't even thought of. All right, the second rule I have is that this isn't a competition. I'm sure that I've taught subjects to experts far smarter than me on that exact same topic. Here's the unique situation though. Your company paid for you to sit in my class. In fact, I've been on that side of the desk many times over the last 10 to 15 years, and I've thought to myself, man, I could teach this in a far more memorable way. What do I do? I kept quiet, I was respectful, and I waited till after class to bring up items. In other words, if the statement the instructor made was just wrong or egregious, I don't call him out right in the middle of class. Instead, afterwards or during a break, I'll ask him a question and give him an opportunity to explain it in a different way, hopefully understanding his error. And the class is not a competition means it goes both ways. It's not a time to prove a student wrong, particularly in a manner that somebody won. If it gets really bad, I've offered the opportunity for the student to leave if they prefer. This is so that way the negativity doesn't harm the rest of the class and their experience. Number three, age does not equate to experience. All right, I'm gonna admit this came up a lot less frequently than it used to. I am getting up there. But as the instructor, there was a lot of times I was the youngest person in the room. Typically, at the start of class, the old timer would cross his arms, sit back, start pounding coffee and think, what's this kid gonna teach me? And I'm gonna tell you, this was pretty short lived because I purposely tried to front load information to teach him something as early as I could in the presentation. That way I won him over. I'm gonna be honest here. I used to struggle with this, the fact that my age didn't equate to experience. But the more I won over the old timers, the more confident I became that I was experienced enough to be leading that class. As the instructor, if you're unsure about this, just remind yourself, the attendee paid to come and see you. You're the expert in the room. You're there to provide value. And if you think that they know more than you do, start asking questions of the class. Get them to participate. It's gonna make it far more valuable than you shrinking and not talking and not being confident. All right, rule number four. It goes, there was this one time at band camp. There's nothing more annoying to the other classmates than one person talking about a job that equates to every single point the instructor makes and making it personal. Now it's one thing if the instructor is explaining the point using a story. Those I try to keep to a minimum because I know it can overwhelm a class. But when an attendee talks about, oh my job, my job, over and over and over again, it is really annoying. So please don't do this. If you have a specific job question, Take the opportunity during breaks or after class if it's gonna take a long time to explain. That's the time to get the experience of the instructor and hopefully get your question answered without disrupting the format and the flow of the course. I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't know of a single instructor that doesn't wanna help every person in the class, particularly because the instructor can use that experience in their own teaching later down the line on the next course and make it more valuable to every student after the fact. So I'm not saying don't ask, I'm saying ask at the right time. And of course the last one, rule number five, identify the best takeaway from the class. I highly recommend if you're attending a course, even if you're the most experienced technician in the world, just look for that one takeaway that you can implement. If you can just take away one thing from the class, it makes the entire day worth it. And then of course, the next step is completely up to you, taking action actually implementing that piece. I used to teach classes on a very regular basis about 10 years ago on the basics like superheat, subcooling, measuring airflow, 
And I have to tell you, I used to see the same students year after year because they never remembered the basics and they never implemented it right after class. Whether it was me going to a system design course and using the software right afterwards on my own condo at the time, or when I used to learn the basics, I used to then immediately go out and work on my own system or the very next system and try to implement what I just learned. That's the way to retain knowledge, right? Identify the one important factor, right? Rule number five, and then implement it. Now, if you don't have the opportunity to implement it right away, another great way to retain this knowledge is to try to teach it to a coworker or friend. Now, if you follow those five rules, I have no doubt you'll have a great experience in anyone's classes. Have you ever violated one of those? Was it my class? I'd love to hear in the comments below. Thanks again for joining me this week at HVAC Pro Blog, where we provide advice for residential system design, quality installation, and system diagnosis.